for he has done bless bless his oh bless the lord oh bless the lord come on help me say it oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy oh, name. For the Lord has done great things. He has done. Oh, the Lord has done great things. Lord has done. Oh, yeah. Bless. Oh, oh. He has done. He has. Come on and help me say it. The Lord has done great things, yeah, yeah. Oh, the Lord has done. Bless his oh. Would you lift your hands and say it with me? I will bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, oh, my soul. And all. Bless his oh, Oh, in Again, I will bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all that is within me, bless his oh, oh, the name. There's another request that we says. Let it breathe on me. Let it breathe on me. Let the breath of the Lord now. Come on, say it with me. Let it breathe on me. Let Let it breathe on me. Let the breath, oh yeah, yeah, of the Lord.
you are our God there's nobody like you nowhere and God we want to tell you thank you this morning before we ask you for anything else we just want to tell you thank you God you've been so good to us uh, better than we have been to ourselves and we just want to pause and tell you thank you God for all that you have done for us Thank you for being our God. Nobody like you nowhere. We want to thank you for being in our lives. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for going to Calvary for us. Thank you for shedding your blood for us. Thank you for dying for us. But God, we really want to thank you for getting up out of the grave with all power in your hand. Thank you. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, God. Thank you, thank you. We want to tell you thank you. We want to tell you thank you. So many have fallen by the wayside. But God, you give us a mind to stand and a mind to stay. Give us a mind to love you more every day. Love your word. Love the feeling of your power. We want to tell you thank you. We appreciate you, God. Had not been the Lord on our side, when the enemy rose up against us, he would have swallowed us up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, God, have your way in this service. Oh, God, walk up and down every pew in here. Let the Holy Ghost move on today. I know we're celebrating a Sunday called Pentecost Sunday. And it's all about the Holy Ghost. Pentecost don't mean Holy Ghost. It's just the day it happened on. But God, we want it to work every day in our life. We want a Pentecost every, every day. Hallelujah. And we thank you now. On every, every song that's sung. Bless us today in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Psalm number 92. Psalm number 92. If you have your devices that have the scriptures on them or your Bible, let's, let's read Psalm number 92, verses 1 through 5. We're going to read it together. Let's read it together. Psalm number 92. Hallelujah. I love the way this psalm begins. I was reading it last week. And, uh, well, this past week. And uh, that's, it really blessed me. I love the way it begins. And uh, I want you to really think about what it's saying. Look at, are you ready? Let's go with it, come on. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. To show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Upon an instrument of ten strings, upon the psaltery, upon the harp, with a solemn sound. For thou, Lord, has made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. O Lord, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. Can we give the Lord praise on this morning? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Are you excited about the Lord Jesus Christ? 
Can you say it with me? I'm excited about Jesus. I'm glad about Jesus. Hallelujah. Now this is what we celebrate as Pentecost Sunday and I like to go back and do some of those old, old, old songs. Amen. There's a song that says, it slipped my mind just that quick. <laughs> There's a song that says, look where he brought me from. Oh, look where he brought me from. Well, he brought me out of darkness to this marvelous light. Oh, look where he brought me from. Come on and help me say it. Oh, look where he brought me from. Oh, look where he brought me from. Brought me out of darkness to this marvelous light. Oh, look where. Oh, it brought me out of sin and shame. I know that he brought me out of sin and shame. Oh, he brought me out of darkness to this moment. Oh, look where he brought me. Well, you don't know how glad I am. Oh, you don't know how glad I am. Brought me out of darkness to this mall of light. Oh, where he brought me from. Well, look where he brought me from. Oh, look where he brought me from. I know that he brought me. Oh, to Oh, look back Well, you don't know how glad I am Oh, you don't know how glad I am Well, he brought me out of darkness To the mark Look where he brought me Brought me from. Oh, he brought me out of darkness. Let's go back a little further. Listen. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where for cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied, singing glory, his name. Come on. Oh, down at the cross where my saint. Oh, down where for cleansing from sin. There to my heart was the blood applied, singing glory. Oh, I'm singing glory to his name, his precious name. Singing glory to his name. Oh, there to my heart was the blood of life. Singing glory to his name. Oh, I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within there where he took me and I'm singing glory to his name. Oh, I'm singing glory to his name. Precious name, I'm singing glory to his name. Oh, there to my heart was the blood Singing glory to his name. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast that poor soul at the Savior's feet. What you gonna do? Plunge in today and be made complete. 
singing glory to his name. Well, I'm singing glory. You ought to clap your hands. His precious name. I'm singing glory to his name. Oh, that to my heart was the blood. I'm singing glory. Here's another old one. Listen, I've come to glorify his name. Glorify his name. I've come to glorify his name. I've come to glorify the name of the Come to glorify his name. Well, you ought to glorify Revive his name. You ought to glow. Refine his name. You ought to glow. Oh, yeah. Uh, ought to glow. Well, come on in glory. Refine his name. On in glory. Refine his name. Come on in glory. Come on and glow. Then the, another old song says, You better come on in this house, children. It's gonna rain. You better come on in this house. It's gonna rain. You better come on in this house. Oh, yeah. It's gonna rain. You better come on in this house. Oh, yeah. It's gonna rain. It's gonna rain down fire. 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 It's gonna rain. You better come on in this house, children. It's gonna rain. You better come on in this house. Oh yeah. It's gonna rain. You better get in a hurry. It's gonna rain. You better get in a hurry. It's gonna rain. You better come on in this house, children. It's gonna rain. You better come on in this house. Oh, yeah. It's gonna rain. Come on, clap your hands. There's a known other old one they used to sing that says, Well, God's not dead. He's yet alive. Oh, God's not dead. Oh, he's yet alive. Oh, God's not dead. Oh, no. He's yet alive. Well, I can feel him in my hand. Feel him in my feet. Feel him all over me. Well, God's not dead yet. I know that God not dead. No, 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 he's yet alive. Oh, God not dead. He's yet alive. Oh, I can feel him in my hands. I can feel him in my feet. Oh, feel him all over me. Oh, Lord, I just want to thank you. Oh, Lord, I just want to thank you. Oh, Lord, I just want to thank you. Hey, Lord, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for being so good to me. So good to me. Everybody help me say it. Oh, Lord, I just want to thank you. Oh, oh, oh Lord. Everybody sing, oh Lord, I, I want to say thank you, thank you, Jesus, yeah. I want to thank you, Lord, for being, you've been good, you've been good, you've been good to me. You are my bread, come on, sing it this morning, and you are my water. And I know you never, ever, ever leave me alone. And I want to thank you, Jesus, for being so good. You've been good to me. Here we go. Oh, Lord, I thank you. Tell him thank you. Everybody tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. Has he been good to you? You want to tell him? 
thank you, Lord. Has it been good to you? You want to tell him thank you, Lord. Well, did he wake you up this morning, Lord? You want to tell him thank you, Lord. And did he start you on your way, Lord? You want to tell him thank you, Lord. But did he put food on your table? You want to tell him thank you, Lord. And did he put pretty shoes on your feet? You want to tell him thank you, Lord. Jesus, thank you, thank you, 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 Jesus, for everything you've done, for all that you've done, for all that you've done, I really, really, really want to say, I really, really want to say, I never would have made it without you, Jesus, I never would have made it without you keeping me, I gotta thank you. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. I thank you, thank you, Jesus. I thank you, thank you, Jesus. I thank you, thank you, Jesus. One more thing. When I didn't have a dime, you stepped right in on time. But when I didn't have a dime, you stepped right in on time. But when I didn't have a dime, you stepped right in on time. When I didn't have a dime, you stepped right in on time. What about this? When I was sick, I thought I couldn't get away. You touched my body, now I can tell. Lord, I said thank you. Lord, I said thank you. Lord, I said thank you. I wanna thank you. Hey! Jesus. Yeah, yeah, I want to thank you for being so good to me, oh, so good to me. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Can we give the Lord praise on this morning? Can we just take a few seconds out and praise him for who he is, for what he has done in our lives? Would you just lift your hands and go for yourself? Don't worry about who's around you, who's beside you, who's behind you, who's in front of you. But let's praise him for being our God and for being who he is. God bless you. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of our God. Hallelujah. And we give God honor and praise on today for his many blessings. Uh, he has bestowed upon us and we thank God uh, that after all we've been through we still have joy after being out of church almost a year for some it was a year but you came back on fire knowing that it was God that kept you and kept you excited about him you know isn't, isn't it something to have a power that works on the inside of you, that even when you're not in the sanctuary, that that power still works. You don't have to have anybody to boost it up. Sometimes you can just be thinking. You can let your mind go back and you think of things that God is doing in your life and what it will do, it will ignite something on the inside Anybody in here besides me ever hollered out a turn? When I say out of turn, nobody was around, nobody was, nobody was pushing you, but you had a holler on the inside that you just had to get out. Come on, somebody. In the book of Acts, the second chapter, in the book of Acts, this is 
But I'm not, a lot of people may not have gotten the message. This is uh, Pentecost Sunday, the day that we celebrate uh, the day of Pentecost. And uh, this is Pentecost Sunday. But I say this, every Sunday is Pentecost with me. Because I need the power of the Holy Ghost in my life every day. Amen. Acts the second chapter, if you have it, say amen. And thank you for standing for the word of God. Verses number one through four. If you have it, say amen. I hear some leaves still turning. If you got it, say amen. If you don't have it, say, wait a minute, I'm almost there. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Somebody say one. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all, somebody say all, filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they were all filled with. I can't get away from that. And they were all filled with. The Holy. Do, do I have at least 50 people in here that are filled with the Holy Ghost? I'm going to read it again. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I want to talk today about Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power. Can you say it with me? Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power. Father, I thank you for your word. Bless us today. Have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Holy Ghost. Power, power, power. Holy Ghost. Power. Back in the 60s and early 70s, they had they came out with a slogan uh, that said, uh, black power. Some of you may remember they, that, that were around. They talked about black power. But I found out that there is no comparison with black power, white power, green power, or orange power when it comes to the power of the Holy Ghost. I believe I have some witnesses in here that now if you sit there and look at me like Alice in Wonderland, it's going to take me a long time this morning. But if you say something every now and then, I'll go ahead and finish. But there's something about the Holy Ghost power that actually changes our lives. Pentecost, we look at on the day of Pentecost, on the day of Pentecost, that word Pentecost actually means 50. It's the word five, you know, you, the five, first five books of the Bible are called the Pentateuch. And, and so that word, that's where we get the word Pentecost from because 50 days after the death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's also a time that the Holy Ghost fell in the upper room which was a unique experience. I submit to you today, now as coming up as a, as a young boy, I often testify about how that uh, my mother-in-law made me 
I told them in the other church I had the Holy Ghost already. But she said, well, you need to get a refreshing. And so what she did was uh, they came down to the church one day through the week and set me on a pew. And uh, two old mothers, I called them inspector and the warden. Because if you didn't have nothing, they were going to tell you, sit down, you ain't got nothing. I would get happy and jump up and begin to wave my hands and scream and holler. And Mother Frankie would say, hey, you ain't got nothing. Sit down. You ain't got nothing. You, when you get it, you'll know you got it. I, I, I submit to you that, that the Holy Ghost is, is not something that someone tells you when you have it. Come on, somebody. It's amazing that nobody has to tell you when you have the measles or the chicken pops, you can see it for yourself. And the Holy Ghost is so contagious until when you have it, you know you got the Holy Ghost. Three times a year, the men would gather together for a feast. The feast of the unleavened bread. It was called the Feast of Pentecost. 10,000 Jews would come. They would come from all over in order to celebrate. But this time, something different happened. 49 days after everything had taken place, we're back again. They're going to experience something on the 50th day, an encounter that changed the world. I often think about uh, Azusa Street, W.J. Seymour, Bishop Haywood, and all of them that were the pioneers that experienced the moving, the power of God, and that began to speak in a language well, people used to mock us about and say we had lost our mind. But here they are about to be filled with the power of the Spirit of God. About to be filled with the Holy Ghost. About to be filled with the Lord Jesus Christ. Which means that I'm abiding in Jesus. It means that I'm walking in Christ means he has cleansed me and he keeps on cleansing me from all unrighteousness. I was witnessing to a young man on, uh, on the other day and we were talking about the power of the Holy Ghost and we also were talking about the baptism in the name of Jesus. He asked me a question that so many want to know. Why is it so important to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Well, the Bible teaches us there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved, number one. Number two, that we are buried with him by baptism in order to rise in the newness of life. Y'all ought to, all you apostolic folks ought to get happy on that part there. But the main thing I told him is that that water takes your black soul, dips it in red blood, and you come out white as snow. I wish I had some witnesses in here that said, thank God for the blood of Jesus when I went down in the name of Jesus. Cleanse me from my sins. That means I'm controlled by him. That word feeling, feel, feeling, it means to be controlled. And if I'm controlled, by the Holy Ghost doesn't mean I'm controlled like a robot but as one that exemplifies that obeys that does what the Spirit of God tells them to do which means I'm empowered I'm led I'm controlled by the Spirit of Jesus Jesus will walk around inside of me and outside of me this body that I live in is not mine anymore but it belongs to God. And it should be a mirror that reflects the image of God. 
you know, saints of God. And, you know, that's something that, 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 that we have gotten away from. Look here, can I deviate just a little bit? That's something we have got, gotten away from. There used to be times. Go, can I go? Yeah, I'm going. There used to be times you could tell who we were. Not just by us speaking in tongues. But by the way we looked. We looked holy. We walked holy. We talked holy. Come on somebody. Used to be a time that when a saint was coming around. If they were cussing they'd hush their mouth. If they had the blues on they'd cut it off. If they were dancing they'd sit down. If they were looking crazy, they straighten their face up. But now we come around, they think that we are part of what, who they are. The Bible tells us to put a difference between clean and unclean. Between holy and unholy. I know people tell you that you have to change with the times, but I come to tell you God never changes. His word is just as true in 2015 as it was in 1935. Help me somebody. So you're controlled by the spirit of God. Which means that after I have received the Holy Ghost. Anybody got the Holy Ghost in here this morning? Somebody ought to say I got it. Like the Bible says. Which means when I have received the Holy Ghost. I'll portray the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, patience, gentleness. I'm going to act holy. I don't get the Holy Ghost and I'm mean as a pit bull. I don't get the Holy Ghost and I hate my brothers and sisters. I don't get the Holy Ghost when I see somebody praising God it makes me mad. Come on, somebody. I don't have the Holy Ghost if I can't love my brothers and sisters like the Bible teaches me to love. You know, when I received the Holy Ghost, I loved everybody. Even I know the folks that didn't like me, I still loved them. Even the folks that looked bad to me, looked pretty to me all of a sudden. Something about the Holy Ghost. In other words, it's going to show up in me. It's going to manifest itself in me. And the Holy Ghost doesn't just manifest itself by dancing. Because on the day of Pentecost, the doorpost shook. Y'all already get that later on. The doorpost began, something inanimate began to move. So it doesn't show up just by a dance. Uh, it doesn't show up by a shout. It doesn't show up just by you running the aisles. But it shows up by the life that you live every day. And the Holy Ghost brothers and sisters, when it comes to it, it's made known by the hearing of yourself speaking in another tongue. There's a church in Atlanta, Georgia, where they advertise the fact that if you don't have the Holy Ghost, we will give it to you. And what they do is they put the words on a screen, some words that they have made up, and they tell you to say those words uh, so many times, and they tell you to speed up each time you say it. By the time you get through speaking up and talking real fast, they say, okay, that's it. There's no change in your life. There's no difference in your life. And you've heard yourself speaking something, but it was a tongue, brothers and sisters, that they gave you. But when you really get the Holy Ghost, you don't need nobody to tell you what to say. You don't need anybody in your ear telling you what to say. You don't need nobody to teach you what to say. But your ears will hear your mouth speak in another tongue. Oh, I wish I had a witness in here. Uh, when it comes, it's manifested. In verse number four, and I'm just about finished, the Bible says uh, they were filled, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. The evidence that the Holy Ghost was there was the speaking in another tongue. They heard themselves speak in another tongue. You know, today is really just a memory, a day that we have in remembrance of receiving the Holy Ghost. I want you to let your mind go back to the very day and the very hour that you received the Spirit of God. Brothers and sisters, it was an experience that you never experienced before 
in your life. Luke had already told them in Acts 1 and 8, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. What kind of power am I going to receive? I'm going to have power to witness. I'm going to have power to be bold. I'm going to have power to stand up for the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, in this second chapter, when the Holy Ghost fell, many of the people thought that they were drunk. And can I share this with you, brothers and sisters? I think in this day and time, we need another drunk church. Oh, y'all ain't helping me in here. I'm not talking about a drunk off of wine and whiskey. I'm not talking about being drunk off a of crown royal. I'm not talking about being drunk off of Bud Light, but I'm talking about being drunk in the Holy Ghost. Uh, how many can remember when back in the olden days we would leave the church on a particular night or Sunday morning service till somebody had to help us to our car and then drive home for us. How many can remember the time when you got the Holy Ghost in the olden days, you at home kicking the covers, speaking in tongues. Oh, brothers and sisters, we gotta get back to it. We got to get back to the old time way. Uh, they said that they were drunk. Let me hurry on. Uh, but Peter, who was very bold uh, and outspoken, he stands up, up in the middle of the congregation and tells them, uh, these are not drunk as ye suppose. He didn't say that they weren't drunk. Uh, he said they are not drunk as ye suppose. Uh, but this is that which was spoken uh, of the prophet Joel that in the last days, uh, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh uh, and that's why brothers and sisters I have a problem uh, with people uh, that said the Holy Ghost only falls on men uh, said they only fall uh, on black flesh uh, I come to tell you the Holy Ghost falls he says upon all flesh uh, that means black flesh white flesh yellow flesh green flesh uh, whatever color your flesh is Democrat, Republican, Independent, uh, it falls on everybody. Uh, your sons and your daughters uh, shall prophesy. Uh, uh, they shall see vision. The old men uh, are going to dream dreams. Uh, uh, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Uh, both men and women shall prophesy. Uh, so whatever it takes to get the Holy Ghost. Uh, I don't know who I'm talking to here on today. Uh, that may not have experienced the power of God. Uh, you got to say, God, whatever it takes, uh, I've got to have the Spirit of God. Uh, I've got to have the Holy Ghost. Uh, I can't make it without it. Uh, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Uh, in the modern day and time, uh, they have now what the preachers do. Uh, call a confession. Uh, they tell you to confess with your mouth uh, and believe in your heart. Uh, and that's all that you have to do. Uh, but honey, I got news for you. Uh, you've got to repent uh, and be baptized uh, in the name of the Lord uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, I wish I had a witness in here. Uh, and brothers and sisters, uh, when you are done, have done that, uh, the Holy Ghost takes over in your life. Uh, but you've got to let it work. Uh, I wish you would look at somebody and tell them, let it work. Uh, you've got to let it operate. Uh, you can't have it and don't let it operate. Do I have any witnesses in here? I often use the illustration about my grandfather. We had what was called a wildcat Buick. That's one they made back in the olden days. Deacon Beeman, you know what I'm talking about. That wildcat. It was supposed to have been a fast car. A fast Buick car that they made. But it had a gear in there called the Super. It had an S on the dashboard and whenever you found yourself in trouble you would 
pull the gear shift down in super uh, and take off and pass that car. Uh, well, granddaddy got in a pickle one day, uh, passing a car between Calhoun City and Bruce, Mississippi uh, on highway number seven. Uh, when he got on the other side, we were in the wildcat. Uh, daddy said, uh oh, I can't get back uh, and I can't get over. Uh, I looked over at him, I said, Daddy, you got a super. Uh, hit the super and let's go. Uh, he snatched the gear shift down in super uh, and that car ran up in the front uh, and went on around that log truck. Uh, I come to tell you this morning, uh, you got a super in your spirit. Uh, you got something on the inside uh, that works on the outside. Anytime uh, you find yourself uh, in a predicament, get your super. Uh, Hit your super uh, and say, Holy Ghost. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm hurrying on to a close here. I don't know about you. Whatever it takes to keep it. That's what I've got to have. I want that power. I need that anointing. I need that fire. And I want to tell some of you in here. You've let your fire go out. What are you talking about, preacher? My fire. I've gotten cold on you. I used to come to church and every time I sat down I had to get up and move y'all ought to help me in here I used to come to the house of God I couldn't just sit still from one part of the service to the next one I couldn't just come to church and not know that I have been in church but I love to hear the saints of God that are sitting in church when I hear hey over here I hear glory over here I hear thank you over here if you got the Holy Ghost you ought to show some sign do I have any witnesses in here the Holy Ghost gives you power it makes that anointing move let me tell you something those of you that have the spirit of God that got a loud and big mouth honey keep your big mouth don't worry about folk when you feel like hollering hollering this is a sanctified church. We're supposed to scream. We're supposed to holler. We're supposed to make noise. So open your mouth. Oh yes, oh yes. I want that power. I want that Holy Ghost power. In St. John, the third chapter, Nicodemus asked Jesus, if a man can enter into his mother's womb and be born again, Jesus tells him, marvel not, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit. He can't even see the kingdom of God. When God created man, man was just a piece of dirt. He was just a piece of clay lying there. He was dead as a hammer. He was just lying there. He had all ten fingers, but he was still dead. Had ten toes, but he was still dead. Until God breathed the breath of life into him. Man became a living soul. And that's what the Holy Ghost is. The Holy Ghost is the wind of God. The Holy Ghost is the spirit of God. The Holy Ghost is the breath of God. Do I have a witness in here? I wish you would look at somebody and tell them the Holy Ghost is everything that I need. Come on and help me in here. I want to tell somebody when you've got the Holy Ghost, when you're down, it elevates. When you're sick, it medicates. When you're lonely, it associates. When you're broke, it compensates. When you're exhausted and when you're dry, it rejuvenates. Is there anybody in here that know you got the Holy Ghost? Is there anybody in here glad you got the Holy Ghost? Open your mouth.
mouth and say, I got it. Y'all ain't helping me. I got it. Like the Bible says, I wish I had a witness in here. I need the power of the Holy Ghost. And you know, I thought about something this morning. So many times we run after miracles. We want to see a miracle here. We want to see a miracle there. I wish I had a witness in here. We said that's the greatest gift is to see a miracle. The greatest gift is not being healed from cancer. The greatest miracle is not being healed from diabetes. The greatest miracle is not being healed from HIV. But the greatest miracle for us to be sitting in church today with the Holy Ghost on the inside. Do I have any witnesses in here that say, I've got a miracle? Look at me. I am. I'm a miracle. I wish I had a witness in here. Brothers and sisters, when we look back over our lives, God brought us from a long ways. And he got us now in his hand. He changed us. Because the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Something on the inside, working on the outside. I wish I had a witness in here. I wish I wish I had somebody that know you got the Holy Ghost that would lift your hands and say, I know I got it. Like the Bible says, something happened to me. Well, in our text as I close, Jesus is fulfilling the promise that he has already made. 40 days after his resurrection, he walked around showing himself to the people but on the 40th day he commanded them to go to Jerusalem and wait 10 more days and pray for 10 more days that blessed me this morning I thought about them praying for 24 hours a day for 10 days and I'm scared of this modern society that can't pray for 10 minutes I wish I had some witnesses in here if you want things to change get down on your knees and call on Jesus I wish I had a witness in him I thought about those men sitting there that were in the upper room giving God the praise if I had been there y'all gotta help me through here can I use my imagination if I had been there I would have fell on my knees and said father Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou would withdraw thyself from me, whether should I go? If I was there in the room, I'd be calling on Jesus. I want to make like we're there now. I want everybody in here like you're in the upper room and you're waiting on the promise you said preacher I already got it but honey sometimes you need a refreshing you need another dip you need God to check you out and touch you all over again I wish I could get somebody to just lift your hands and say refresh me Lord because I need a revival wake me up Lord shake me up Lord wake me shake me don't let me sleep too late I wish I had a witness in here and sometimes you got to do like the psalmist said you've gotten to the point where you can't feel God anymore don't you don't want to die like that Psalm 39 and 13 says oh spare me that I may recover strength in other words, God let me cover from strength huh, before I leave here. Huh, is there anybody in here?
here want God to revive you you need another refreshing you need another dip I wish I had a witness in here is there anybody in here glad you got the Holy Ghost and you see yourself you've gone back a little bit you've shifted back a little bit you're backed away a little bit but you ought to lift your hands and say God here I come I'm chasing after you I'm running after you I've got to have you I need you Lord revive me revive me revive me I said revive me I said revive me I remember years ago I was working in the penitentiary and back then a young man was taking heart medication and he passed out in the floor in the dining room he was a great big young man but he had a bad heart condition and he stopped breathing everybody around him panicking but there I was raising the holiness church sitting there looking at him and the Lord told me what to do right then he said go lay your hands on him but while you're laying your hands on him open his mouth and put your mouth on him and breathe into him I began to pray I didn't want to kiss no man y'all ain't helping me in here but I put my mouth over his mouth and I gave a few short breaths after a while he coughed that was a sign to know that he was back to life I wish I could get somebody in here to ask God to breathe on you you ought to cough now y'all ain't helping me I'm not talking about a regular cough but the kind of cough that says glory the kind of cough that says thank you the kind of cough that says hallelujah open your mouth praise him open your mouth and say revive me restore unto me the joy of thy salvation I got to have it back I need my dance back I need my shout back I need my praise back Holy Ghost I want y'all to help me close. Everybody on your feet. We're going to have an old time tarrying service. I know you don't have to wait anymore because it's a gift that you receive. God has already given it. All you got to do is receive it. I wish I had somebody that know you got the Holy Ghost and you've drifted away. What is a drift, brothers and sisters? It's an unnoticeable move but I want to tell you something when you drift away from God you can tell you've drifted away you know you've drifted away because the joy that you used to have you don't have it no more the fire that you used to have you don't have it no more is there anybody in here that will be honest like I am and say God I need more I want more more I've got to have more whatever you got to do God revive me again open your mouth and say revive me Holy Ghost renew me Holy Ghost wake me up Holy Ghost I bless you I'm through the power of the Holy Ghost the power of the Holy Ghost the power of the Holy Ghost do you realize what you have if you have the Holy Ghost but you've got to let it work let me say this too let me say this too I've had several discussions with different pastors and different ones that says that once you speak in tongues, don't speak anymore. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard in my life. Come on, somebody. Can I say this to you? This is just me. 
You ought to want to speak daily. You ought to want to speak daily. When you have something that makes you speak, you ought to say, Holy Ghost, talk to me. Hallelujah. I have been in a crowd of people. The Holy Ghost would hit me and I'd say something in tongues. They said, what'd you say? I said, I wasn't talking to you. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. You ought to want to speak daily. There's nothing like the power of God in your life. I know we've been out of church a long time. But the Holy Ghost didn't catch the corona. Let me say it again. The Holy Ghost didn't catch COVID-19. Brothers and sisters, we as people of God, those of you that got the Holy Ghost years ago, and you've gotten cold. Years ago, when we lived in the country, there was, we had a fireplace. I'm going to let you go in just a minute. And sometimes early in the morning, that fire would go out. Daddy would come in there and take that old poker and pull that back log up that was still burning. And it would set everything else back on fire. Sometimes all he had to do was just stir in it. And can, can, can I say, tell you something? If you got it and it's not hot like it used to be, just start stirring in it. Just start stirring in it. Hallelujah. I want that fire, that power that was given to us on the day of Pentecost. Many of us we're walking miracles. We're living miracles. What are you saying, Pastor? We're miracles because of the fact of where we come from. Some of us come from families that knew nothing about holiness, cared nothing about holiness. And here you are today, filled with the Holy Ghost. Some of us People in our community said we never be nothing. Never have nothing. But look at you today. You're somebody in God. And yet we want to come to church Sunday after Sunday. Act like he hadn't done anything for us. Every time we walk in those doors, the very fact that he gave us the Holy Ghost, we ought to come in with our hands in the air. Sometimes... Champ, Champ will tell me, Paul, Paul, let's dance. He has some shouting music on. Come on, Paul, Paul, let's dance. I said, Paul, Paul, you still could dance, but now I just bunny hop. If you don't mind, tell somebody you ought to do something. If you can't wave your hand, you ought to shake your head. If you can't shake your hand, you ought to move your shoulders. You ought to do something. Let somebody know you're still alive. Ah, oh, glory, still alive. I know everybody don't praise him like they used to because sometimes I see some of you do this real quick. I, I said the Holy Ghost didn't hit them. Hallelujah. 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 There's something about the power of God. Something about the power of God. And you know, something about his power, how it changes isn't it something the way the power of God changes? It changes your mind. It changes your mindset. It changes your way of walking.
The Holy Ghost will make you love the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you.